The first one uh, is Nicolas Somashi from Quandela. Uh, hi, Nicolas, it's nice to see you. Uh, so, hi, Carmen. Um, hi. Topic really close to my heart, uh, Quandela are pioneering uh, commercial single photon sources and their use uh, in quantum computing. Uh, Nicolo has been behind this effort uh, for many years now. He's the CTO and co-founder. Uh, so over to you, Nicolo. Super excited to, to hear your talk. Thank you very much, Carmen, for the introduction and for, for the invitation. Very happy to be back at Be Quick and to present the last development and advances we have been doing the past years uh, in developing quantum light sources based on solid state quantum dots, but also optical modules, which can be used to build up optical quantum computing platform. A few words about Quandela created in 2017. We are now more than 20 people located in uh, divided in two sites, uh, both uh, near Paris, France, in the south of the suburbs in the C2N CNRS Institute, where we have access to a state-of-the-art clear room of 3,000 square meters for the fabrication of our solid-state devices, and in Massy, where we have a large office space and laboratories uh, used for assembly and also uh, part of the theory effort we are pursuing. So I want to uh, concentrate today on optical quantum computing and look into the details of all the modules, all the steps that we need to create an efficient platform, starting from the quantum light sources, which uh, depending on, uh, not depending on which uh, protocol you want to use, you always have to take care of these three uh, figure of merit, the purity, the brightness, and the indistinguishability, which is telling you how many photons actually you have in the pulse, the probability to have the photon you want and the uh, mean wave packer overlap in between uh, them. The main approaches are based on a uh, laser base or so frequency conversion. So laser in a linear medium uses spontaneous parameter and conversion of four way mixing, uh, which permits to uh, generate couples of indistinguishable photon where usually uh, one his or all is detected to herald the presence of the other one. And in this case, if you write down the equation, you see that uh, the efficiency of generation also depends on the probability to generate multi-photon pairs, which is something that in a protocol for quantum computing gives you error, which means that if you want to keep the G2, so the purity high, you need to keep the brightness, the emission efficiency low. So you are bounded to this uh, bottleneck, but despite this, they are a quite easy uh, system to build up, although not easy to scale up. Otherwise, you can use single photometers, and here I discuss about semiconductor quantum dots, which behaves as artificial atom in the sense that a two-level system can be excited, optically dry, driven, so to get emission of only single photons that are not bounded between brightness and uh, purity, so you can get, uh, you get to approach uh, perfect emission purity and also uh, unity efficiency. The counterpart is that they are hard to, to build up. You need uh, a lot of techniques to manipulate the system and they work at cryogenic temperature, although up to 8 Kelvin, so uh, much warmer than other platforms. In the past year, we have seen different ways to uh, increase the uh, emission efficiency, especially uh, using a multiplexing technique for the frequency conversion system. And the technique which uh, consists in adding up a sequence of uh, low efficiency sources uh, together each one with each uh, with the detector and switches and delay line so you can basically uh, teach clock pulse check which one is fire and redirect the emission of that specific source to the output you can calculate the number or require repetition by this formula uh, placing a threshold, for example, 57 in uh, this case, and you see that you require at least 30 of these uh, repeated sources, which you can see it, it, the number builds up very fast when you want to increase the threshold. Uh, so people uh, use uh, CMOS technology and big foundries to, to build all these elements that can be contacted in a small area, but with the uh, probability of emission going up, also the size and the losses increases, which uh, keeps you uh, forcing adding more and more elements. 
On the other side, the quantum dot community have uh, advanced very fast as well with several interesting results. And I mentioned only one here, specifically the from the group of Richard Warburton, where a record brightness of 57% in the fiber output, so after the photo manipulation has been demonstrated. And this is just based on a very well-designed quantum dot system with the, an open cavity, some optics and a cryostat. So very simple, but very, very efficient. So at Quandela, we uh, follow this process and we started in 2008 at CNRS uh, by uh, using a unique technique which permits to place semiconductor quantum dots deterministically in an optical cavity on the form of a micropillar or few uh, micrometer. In the years, we have uh, changed design, we have added electrical contacts so to achieve record brightness and record indistinguishability up to 99.9%. Uh, created Squandela to commercialize the system and now we can uh, fabricate several devices with very high reproducibility and very high fabrication yield as uh, presented in the paper of the last year. So we can fabricate several chips, each one containing several devices with very high performance, uh, both for the higher percentage of them. And this is an important step to try to create identical sources remotely. And this is something that we have started to study, where you can see that we can interfere sources on different chips by independently tune the voltage, so to match the energy to their maximum emission and therefore interfere the photon emitted by these dif different devices. We are now getting 65% uh, in distinguishability, which is a great scientific result, but still not enough for uh, scale up optical quantum computing platforms. So we have a lot of work to do, but the aim is to exploit the uh, semiconductor foundries to adapt it to uh, our process, so to scale up the processing and have several of highly efficient devices in a, a small uh, space and hopefully also uh, identical. The other thing you have to take care of is the way you uh, control these devices. So we have moved from a so-called resonance fluorescence regime where uh, the uh, obligation of using cross polarization to filter out laser and single photon were forcing the brightness to below 50%. And in our case, we were getting up to 20, 25% and move to a near resonance regime, where here the driving pulse is set at a higher energy, and we use then a phonon relaxation, phonon assisted process to get to the higher excited state and then get a highly efficient emission. So here we are not forced by cross polarization, we do simple spectral filtering, but we can get highly polarized emission by using and exploiting the intrinsic dipole of an exciton transition. Here we have demonstrated in this paper uh, a brightness of 50%. Keep maintaining very low G2, so high single photon purity and high indistinguishability. So the path is clear. We have keep increasing the efficiency of our sources in the, in the past year, and we are working hard to bring uh, these devices to efficiency above 70%, hopefully to 80%. We have been working hard also on the manipulation of this photon, uh, moving from complex free space uh, optical setup to something now which is very simple, clean, stable, and efficient because now we can directly fiber a single photon emitter, so a micro pillar, a tiny waveguide basically, to a tailored uh, single mode optical fiber. So here the laser is sent through the fiber directly placed in a cryostat thanks to uh, active alignment of nanopositioner, we can uh, efficiently couple this fiber to the single emitter uh, and achieve coupling efficiency also experimentally, which are above 90%. And this allows you to place all the filtering that you need externally in a box, uh, use standard electronics and fibers to have something very stable and very efficient, which is basically alignment free, so easy to use for even not expert uh, users in, in quantum optics. So these are the first step in order to provide single photon, where we want to interface single photon sources to, uh, for example, integrated circuit, 
we need another element. And this is an active the multiplexer uh, system which transforms a sequence of uh, photons in different time beings in, uh, in photons at different uh, spatial mode, which uh, pins into uh, an integrated circuit at the same time. So we can find different, uh, several approaches in the literature, which are all based on this uh, kind of design using either poker cell or uh, EOMs. So uh, active elements that modify the polarization of the photon, and uh, which are though quite expensive in terms of space and equipment because the number of active elements that you require for n photon is always n minus one. We have now developed a new uh, system which has completely different design, which can provide with only one active element up to six photons. So rerouting sequences of pulses uh very efficiently so you can see here the specs you can see here for five photon the pulses uh pulse sequence for a cycle and you can see that while we can uh, place our single photon on the plateau here we still have to deal with some down and rise time and all these uh parameters are what are defining at the end the uh, rate of the n photon output n photon coincidence that you can get out of the, of the source device and outside of the multiplexer. And now with standard Quandela devices of brightness of 30%, we can get six photon fold more than one kilohertz uh, count rate. So these modules are ready. They're going to be provided to, to some partners in the next month. And they are also ready in our labs to, to start to, uh, to play with, with integrated circuit that we got from uh, collaborators. The next step, though, is to transform actual uh, laboratories, so uh, a table, an optical table and low vibration cryogenic system in the standalone full system. And this is what uh, we want to provide with this uh, machine, which will, we call Prometheus, which contains everything you need from a uh, laser to laser shaping module, the multiplexer, the photo manipulation and as well cryogenics and the single photon source. This because we get rid of active alignment and free space optics by pigtailing efficiently the single emitter with few uh, hundred nanometer precision to a tailored single mode fiber. So the system doesn't require active alignment. It can be placed in the standard cryogenic system. For example, the ones uh, used by uh, nanowire uh, single photon detectors, uh, which are compact and uh, rather cheap as well, so you can integrate everything in a rack tower. So an important point here is that if you already have single photon detectors and cryogenic system, or you're planning to buy one, uh, we already started. We have started discussing with the major providers so to include our devices into the same system as the detector. So feel free to contact us and to also explore uh, this option. So despite Prometheus has not being delivered yet, we are launching it officially from uh, autumn uh, 2021. It has already appeared on the first press pages together with President Macron during the announcement of the quantum national plan, uh, which happened in, uh, in January. So we're very happy uh, for that. The next step for us is to add the additional modules that you require for building up, actually, a quantum computing platform, which means uh, circuits and detectors, but also to include all the software, the algorithms, and the compiler part to be able to manipulate the system. This is something that we want to do based on the design of Prometheus and develop a rock, a reconfigurable optical quantum computing platform by uh, using integrated circuits starting with few uh, single photons, so with few number of photons from four, six, and uh, increasing the number and getting up to uh, 12 and more with the configurable circuit that we are getting from our partner, for example, the group of Roberto Zellame in Milan and uh, from QX. And this is an effort that we have 
launching after uh, many other groups in the world are doing based on the sources of Quandela that we are providing. For example, in the focusing project, which is a European project based in Milan, in uh, Twente, in, uh, in, uh, in Rome and in Portugal, which uh, aims at developing a bosonic uh, platform, which uh, we are happy actually to be provided on the source uh, part. On or the group of Professor, professor Sergei Kulik in Moscow, which are also choosing Quandela to build up their optical uh, quantum computing platform uh, based in uh, their uh, national plan. So we have a lot of projects. We are uh, scaling up and we are then requiring a lot of effort. That's why I want to conclude uh, advertising some open position, especially in the quantum algorithm team uh, headed by Shane Mansfield, who joined Quandela last uh, September. So uh, many open positions on different parts on the algorithm and the theory side, but also on the implementation of the platform. So quantum optics engineer, uh, designers, and uh, people working on the measurement and detection, but also uh, engineer expert in clear room processing to start and uh, larger production of the device and uh, keep increasing their efficiency. So feel free to uh, check the website or contact me directly for more questions and uh, hopefully to get uh, part of the team of our uh, great uh, quantum engineers. So this is it and I thank you all uh, for your attention. Thanks so much, Nicola. That was uh, that was really great uh, and excellent progress. Uh, we have a few questions. We have a few minutes. Um, so the first one was from Peter Koch. You match the frequencies of the photons, but how uniform is the line width of the photons from different sources? Yes, uh, that's a part of the effort in the control of the fabrication side, uh, the fabrication process. It means that. Uh, the quantum dots, the emitter, are chosen to be uh, try to be on the same frequency, so there is a good matching in the properties of the quantum dot itself. And the hard part is to build up the optical cavity around it uh, with very few differences between one to each other. Now we are managing this, and is what actually then uh, keep the the lifetime, so the the optical mode of the emitted photon. Uh, the most identical as possible. S sorry, I don't hear you. Oh, sorry, I was muted, I think. So we have another question from Alex Clark. Does fiber excitation introduce any extra noise or background? Uh, so far, we haven't seen this. Uh, because the the mode matching is crucial, so by uh, tailoring the size and the type of the single mode fiber, we also optimize in the collection. We also optimize the encoupling. So when the job is done, we require very few power to excite the system, and a part of the filtering, the usual filtering that we have to to, to get, we don't see additional uh, noise in the in the signal coming back from the device. Great, thank you. Um, and I can I can finish with a, with another question. So um, you've you've showed really great progress in terms of uh, remote interference, uh, brightness. Are you working towards a specific benchmark uh, in the next uh, couple years that you think um, should be the main focus of the of the improvement of the devices? Yes, uh, we we are pushing as much as possible on the uh, efficiency of single devices, but we know that it cannot really provide uh, large scale or uh, hundreds of photon uh, interference or platform in this uh, way. So we are working directly on the uh, generation of cluster states directly from single photon sources. 
And this is what is going to change everything, uh, we think, to a really major uh, scale up. So uh, the group of Pascal Sinlar is working actively on that. Quandela is contributing uh, with, with the student, uh, taking part in the project. And uh, we have some results I, can, I cannot show you today, but hopefully the next time. Great, that, that's really exciting. Thanks a lot, Nicolo.